This is another editing tutorial on the Insta360 Studio Editor on the desktop. I've got some new things to share that I've discovered that I want to share with you that are really, really cool and will hopefully improve the editing of your 360 videos. So I'm going to jump straight across to my computer screen and I'm going to show you everything that I have just discovered which I'm really excited about. Make sure if you click the link in the description below, you can go and grab my action camera video settings cheat sheet, which will give you all my favorite video, video settings depending on where you're shooting. Let's jump over to my computer and I'll show you what I've found. So, I have opened up Insta360's studio here and I have selected the video that I want to edit. Now, you can see here I've not done any trimming yet, this is just literally as the video has been imported. So first of all, we're going to trim this down just to a workable size, it's not a massive video. I'm just going to quickly trim this, and this is a mountain bike video obviously because I do a lot of mountain biking. And we're going to trim out a 20 second clip that we want to use. And one thing you'll notice with editing this app is it can be a little bit frustrating with when you're doing a lot of keyframing. It can be quite time consuming to perfectly um, keyframe every single frame in your video. So what I've discovered is a few different things on here. And the first thing is up here. So if we click on, on um, stabilization type, and then we want to turn direction lock on. Okay, now this has worked really well for me with my mountain bike videos because it's just helped me speed up my editing process. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So let me see if I just position the point of view shot where I want it. And bearing in mind this trail has loads of turns and stuff and I want the camera to follow the course that I'm following. Now if we turn direction lock off, let's just, and we hit a keyframe, so command and K for keyframe, and we play the clip, this is what happens. Watch when I hit a corner. And you see it's gone like off angle. The camera is trying to point where I set it, which isn't ideal. So we're going to delete that keyframe, go back to the start. I'm going to turn direction lock on. I'm just going to show you the difference, right? Let me just, now let's put a keyframe in. Okay, let's play again. Now watch the difference. Still needs a lot of work, but can you see how the camera is already trying to follow where I'm going. So for me, this is going to reduce my editing time so much and it's going to create a better outcome because obviously the more keyframes we add in a video, the the less realistic a video can tend to look, I think, because it's quite it can be quite jerky and the camera's trying to move between all these different points. Whereas we want to create this really smooth motion. And we can do that with direction lock and keyframing. So if I now go back and I've got a keyframe at the start, let's go to my first corner and you'll see that the peak of my helmet is showing in this which I don't want. See here, like at the top there, I don't want that. So I'm going to reframe this keyframe. I'm going to keyframe that there, keyframe here. Right, let's play this now and you'll see the difference those few keyframes have just made. A little bit shown, but it's okay. So that is how I've been using direction lock in my video creation to create way better videos in way less time. Now, the second thing is something really interesting because when you edit with 360 videos in the Insta360 Studio, there's no way to um, add blur or add directional blur to your videos. You can do that in things like um, GoPro's desktop editor and Premiere Pro, but I've never found a way to do it in Insta360's studio editor until the other day. So, I want to show you something. I'm just going to come back to the start again. I'm going to delete all my keyframes. And maybe you guys already knew this, but this is quite interesting I found. Now, in mountain biking, I like to have a bit of directional blur on the side of my videos to, um, to, to em emphasize the the speed aspects of my riding so it just feels a little bit more immersive and you may want that you may not want that in your footage depending on what you're shooting but what I found is if you adjust your <clears throat> if 
you adjust your point of view or your field of view, so I'm just zooming in on my MacBook now, on my tracking pad, you'll obviously see there if I zoom out, it almost becomes more like this tiny planet look. So you can see there the horizon is quite bent, it doesn't look that realistic. I mean, the more we go, the more tiny planet it looks. Now if we come into somewhere that's kind of like middle ground, so it's, you know, I want the field of view, so it's kind of a trade-off all the time with this. Now, if we if we point our camera down, you'll see the field of view changes a lot. Whereas if we pull the camera up, we're going to be able to create more blur. Okay. Now, if I zoom out now, so I can't really go too far up because of my peaks at the top there, but you'll see in a second how different this looks. Right. Can you see the difference now? It might be hard to see on this, but. I can see subtle differences to the side of my frame where it's kind of been bent ever so slightly but not too much and you can achieve this by using the rotation so the more you rotate the, the, your camera up and then you can then you zoom out you'll be able to get that directional blur on the side of your videos and it would probably work better if I didn't have this helmet in the way to be honest with you so if the camera was mounted on my peak or you know out the way of obstacles this effect would work better. But that's just something I've noticed and I think it's been really useful for me when I've been editing videos. So I thought I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I still think Insta360 Studio has a long way to go in terms of being a better user platform, but for how simple it is and how good the effects that you can get out of it are, I think it's mind blowing for beginners and advanced people who are making videos. Like I've started doing a lot of my 360 editing in this software because it's just so easy and, and the the actual processing time and processing speed compared to using something like Premiere Pro is way less. So when I try and edit a 360 video in Premiere Pro, it tends to be quite laggy because of the file sizes and the processing speeds and everything. It just seems to use up a lot of the computer's energy. Whereas in this, I don't really get any lag or anything like that and I'm using the same computer. So it means I can edit faster and create better videos. And this will also work as well, depend whichever aspect ratio you want to shoot in. So if you want to do 9 by 16 or 16 by 9, what I've just talked about will work for both of them. So yeah, quick one from me today. Hope that was useful for you. And again, hop down in the description below, grab my action camera settings cheat sheet, which will give you all my favorite settings for your action camera, your Insta 360 camera, so that's great. And if you've got any questions on the editing studio or anything I've talked about, pop them in the comments and I'll get back to you or I'll make a video to answer your question. Hope it was useful guys, see you in the next one.